to Rise Church. My name is Alicia Ramos, and I get to serve here as one of our leaders, and also happen to be married to Pastor Ben Ramos. Jesus has called us to be a church all about sound theology, coupled with the authentic power of God, because the Bible is the inerrant, infallible word from God which he's given to us for today. And he instructs us to be empowered, used by, and led by his Holy Spirit. As you came in, you should have received a bulletin. Please check this out for more about who we are and upcoming events. Also, in the seat back in front of you, there should be connect cards and growth cards. Please fill these out with your information so that we can be connecting with you and with any prayer requests that you might have so that we can partner with you in prayer because we know that the Lord answers our prayers. And as far as the growth cards, please use these if you are new in the faith or any other place in your walk with the Lord that we can help you to take those next steps. So I hope you guys are ready to kick it. Hey, come on, that was funny. Good to see you guys. Um, a few things I wanted to communicate uh, before we continue on in our worship this morning. Um, we did announce last week of our support of Andrew and Kirsten Steele and the missionaries uh, as, as missionaries. And so if you would like to be giving towards them, uh, you can designate that on your checks, on um, any envelopes, or if you're giving online, you can feel free to be doing that. We do have some big changes, or uh, I shouldn't say big changes. We have a number of things going on, rather, within our kids' ministry, and I do want you to know that we will be keeping you up to date as those things happen. Remember where we're at as a church, though. We have to remember our identity. This is a new kingdom work. And so what we're doing here is we're simply holding everything before the Lord and saying, God, what do you want us to do? And we're, uh, we're making sure it's biblical. We are making sure that we are led by the Holy Spirit and we're holding it within wise counsel. And so this is our process as we're moving forward. And so we should have a video out next week as to what we believe God is calling us to do in terms of kids ministry um, as we move forward. So be on the lookout on Facebook, on YouTube, on email, or whatever other way that you like to communicate with us, and we will uh, let you know what's going on with Kids Ministry. Um, I also just want to say a big thank you to all of the people who helped us move out of our building next door. We were leasing that, and we just did this whole transition, and we had a whole team of people helping, and um, I, I, I would guess that people have some sore backs this morning, so we'll pray for healing in Jesus' name. <laughs> But thank you guys so much for everyone who helped. And let's go ahead and turn our eyes to the screen to help us continue to prepare and move towards uh, more worship. And as we begin to enter into a time of worship onto the Lord with music and with our tithes and our offerings, there will be baskets in the front and the back that you can place those. Or if you prefer, you can send a text message to 84321. Just include your cash amount and it'll lead you through the next steps. Lastly, you can give via our website at risechurchid.org. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that this message would be an encouragement in your life, would help you to see the mission field that is all around you and would empower you to step into what God is calling of your life. Let's worship together. You guys want to stand? God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. Billion galaxies 
There's a verse in the Bible, I know we've all probably heard it a, a million times, but it's out of 1 Samuel, and it's, for the Lord doesn't see as a man sees, because man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And, you know, as we now begin to move more into worship, um, on this next song, one of the verses is, it says, I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. You've seen them all and still call me a friend. Oh, there's nothing better than you. So, you know, God sees our failures and flaws, and he sees when we make mistakes I made a royal, gigantic mistake a couple weeks ago, right here. And sometimes we're our own worst enemy because I beat myself up over that for, I, it took me a few days to get over it. But the wonderful thing is, God doesn't see it the way I see it. God sees it the way he sees it. And it was something to learn from. And it was something that hopefully I will grow from. So he does. He takes graves. He takes those things, those failures, those flaws. He takes those things that we come down on ourselves about. And he makes them into gardens. He makes them into the most beautiful praise to him. If we just surrender those things to him and admit that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. That's a good thing. This is Graves into Garden.
turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory Yeah, and I just want to hit that tag one more time because uh, if we could get the lyrics up for that one more time, you turn bones into armies. As I'm, as I'm looking at that, I mean, there's a number of different ways that we can understand it, but here's what the Lord was showing me, that God is actually doing that within many of us this morning. He's calling up the armies within us. He's calling up the highways within us. And He's calling us to submit our own version of our identity before Him. And He's saying, let go of your old concept of who you are. Your old concepts of how you view yourself. God is giving a new identity to us this morning. You are sons. You are daughters of the Most High God, of the Living God. And He's calling us to let go all else. Let go of it and embrace this. So let's sing this tag again and just declare the goodness of God in this house.
is good, isn't it? Got to think about who you're really singing to. Amen. The only one, the King of Kings. I would get excited in this house. <laughs> you know what I mean? The only one, and he visits us right here. He wants to have relationship with us right here. Every time we get together, or ever, he's he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. But when we get together and our hearts worship together, God shows up. He turns graves into gardens. And he's the only one that can do it. Thank you, Jesus. Good Lord. Thank you.
as a worship team, we have joy. And that you would also be filled with joy. And a scripture came to my mind, and it's out of Psalm 16, verse 11. And it says, you show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That is what the Father's heart is for each one of us. Fullness of joy and pleasure in his presence. He just wants to wrap you in his arms. He wants to hold you. He wants to tell you how precious you are to him. And that is where we find joy, in his presence. Let's enter into that presence. And I've carried a burden for too long. i yeah. 
One of the things that we're doing here right now as we worship Jesus is that we are ministering unto the Lord. And what that means is that we are worshiping him. We're giving him all of our attention, all of our affection. And just as we've been teaching, we are listening to his voice. And he's giving us direction. What, how, how do you want us to worship you? How do you want us to respond? What are you asking us to step into? And so uh, it looks different, different days. Um, and this morning, we're just having the Lord speak through a lot of people. And I just want to, I want us to, to walk through that and recognize that as the people of God, we hear his voice and we speak it forth. And we've talked about the different ways that we can hear the voice of God. One of the ways that we do that is through scripture. And we've talked about how God can speak through scripture and how he can remind us of scriptures in the Bible and then speak through that. And so we have a good example of this. The Lord was speaking to Jonathan um, just a, a moment ago. And I want him to share um, before we move forward. Could we, can I swing this? So um, as Ben was talking about um, what's the what's the sea that God wants to turn into dry land and what is the army that he wants to raise up from dry bones. And and I, I just turned to the Lord and I said, Lord, what, you know, the, the song is awesome, but what is it in me? What is the grave that you want to turn to in a garden in my life? And, um, and what's the sea? What's the army? And, and he showed me, these are the impossible things that you can't do on your own, right? These are the things only I can do. And then um, I had this scripture come to mind, and I, I, you know, searching for it, and funny enough, it's out of Ezekiel, where he's talking about the dry bones. I'm like, okay, God, that's, that's cool. So Ezekiel 37, 11 says, Then he said to me, Son of man, these are the bones of the whole house of Israel. And here's the scripture that, that he brought to my mind. They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. So that's, that's us in our natural thinking, seeing the circumstances in front of us and saying, it's, it's broken, it's done, it's dead. My dream, and, and what this was for me is, the, the Lord spoke something to me a long time ago, and I feel like that dream is dead. And yet he says, okay, that's your confession. Here's the way I see it. Therefore, in, in verse 12, therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. So here's your confession. We're dry, we're dead, we're cut off. Here's my confession. I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves. I'm going to do the impossible. You're seeing the natural and you're, you're off in, in, in that space. I'm in, I can do the impossible. I'm going to speak this, but you have to agree. So you speak it out. You prophesy. Okay? And here's the kicker. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened up your graves, O my people, and brought you from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. So what the Lord was speaking to me is he said, here's your negative confession. Here's what I say. Speak out what I say. Jesus, Jesus said, I only do the things I see my father do. I only say the things I hear my father say. We have the opportunity right now to ask the Lord, Lord, what's my grave? What have I called dead? What have I written off as impossible? And not only do we have to say, yes, God, you can do the impossible. We have to say, yes, God, you can do the impossible in me and through me. And then speak that out. Whatever, whatever he shows you that's dead or dry, speak it out in faith in what he shows you and speak life. Prophesy. And then when it comes to pass, you'll know that it was the Lord. So as the Lord would speak, we have a responsibility and a calling and an invitation, really, to do something with it. 
So when God would speak this, he's inviting us to step into it and actively participate. Our walk with Jesus is not a sideline walk. Right? We get to participate in this. And so let's, let's ask the Lord. Let's just take a moment, wherever we're at right now, let's just ask him, what are the things in our life that we have called graves? What are the things in our life that we have called dead? Impossible, broken. I even see uh, someone, someone you've considered yourself to be just odd and weird and you've spoken that over yourself. But here's what God's saying. No, I've made you unique. I've made you the way that I've made you so that you can reach specific people that no one else can reach. There are people in here who've who've seen the supernatural work of God. You've seen him heal. You've seen him speak through you. You've seen him be use you. And it's been it's been a dry season and you haven't seen it in a minute. And God's saying, I'm calling it back to life. What is it that the Lord is speaking to you? As we've talked about just hearing the voice of God, I just wanna, I just wanna sit here for a minute. Let's just sit, continue to listen. Again, we remember that the biblical example is God from cover to cover and everywhere in between is God speaking to his people. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. The example of Jesus, the example for us was him, like Jonathan said, only doing what he saw the father doing, only speaking what he heard the father speaking. So we we pay attention right now, God. We recognize that you are here in this place, that you are not only omnipresent, but you are omniscient, Lord. You know past, present, and future. Speak now, speak now. If someone would feel like they had a word of encouragement for the Lord, uh, from the Lord for our church, I don't know if anybody would be so bold as to to share, but I want us to have Tony. I was sitting there listening to Jonathan, how things are starting to unfold. The Lord just said, give me your dream. Give me your brokenness. The thing that you think is dead, give it to me because I broken things, those things that we were considered dead, those things that we considered completely impossible. Lord, we raise them up before you and we say, Lord, breathe life, bring resurrection in Jesus' name. Yeah, so as as we continue to just listen, let's respond to that where God may be calling you to lay something down. Let's just take a moment and and do that. Whatever it may be, let's lay it down. Father, we lay it at your feet. God, we lay our, our failures. We lay our whatever we may consider to be shortcomings. We lay our brokenness, our oddities.
God, we even lay down this. I just see some people have like a, a, a vision of where we're supposed to, where we were supposed to be in life. And for whatever reason, we're not, we're not there. And so we, we let's lay that down. We lay it down, God, and ask that you give us a fresh vision. A fresh vision. God wants you to know that I'm using it, he says. I'm using it. And one of the ways that we respond to the Lord as he would be, uh, as he would be sharing these encouragements, just say, yes, Lord. Yeah, I, I accept that. You know, if, it, if, it's for, if it's for you, just say, yeah, yeah, that was for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for speaking. Who else would have something that they felt like the, the Lord was sharing? but it's not about me, it's about where you are today. Um, I felt like an outsider for a long time in my life, you know? And so if you're an outsider, I guess the thing you want to be is on the inside, right? And yet, I think what the most amazing thing Jesus said to me or did in my life is that he... Um, he said it's not about being on the inside. I came to, like, destroy outside and inside so that it's love and it's acceptance and so we've been trapped by like if you felt like an outsider and you felt like gosh I'm not I'm not an insider I'm an outsider I'm here to tell you it's not about inside and outside it's about receiving God's love and becoming or you know let him letting him just into your heart and to work in your heart so that Instead of feeling like you're on, because if you're on the inside, it's like you earned it or you deserved it, right? And we didn't earn it or we didn't deserve getting to the inside. Ha ha, I've arrived. I'm on the inside now. You know, and I think for us as a church, we don't want to be a church about, aha, we're on the inside or we're, you know, I mean, we're inside God's love. Amen. Amen. But if he loves me, then he loves you. And if he loves you, then he loves me. And if he has it for me, then he has it for you. Because God's not playing favorites. He wants us to be accept to all who received him. To them he gave the right to be called the children of God, right? And so I just want to encourage you today. If you have felt or you feel right now like, you know, like church, I don't even know if I want to be in a church. That's like, I didn't grow up in a church. Guess what? These days most people didn't grow up in a church, actually. So, um, so. I'll give this back in a second here, Pastor, but I just wanted to tell you guys that. Go? Okay, he says go. So did you ever feel did you ever feel like an outsider? Did you ever? If you're, you know, you can write, right? And then did God bust through that for you? Because and if he hasn't, he would. He will. He wants to. He doesn't want it to be about outside and inside. He wants it to be about become my child. Cut that song we sang, I run to the father, right? So yeah. Um so for me, um, the revelation that brought me to Jesus was he loves me so much. And I'm bawling and I'm bawling in a church when there's a play and it's about the death and the re resurrection of Jesus. And all I can do is bawl and go, I can't believe how much he loves me. I thought I was unlovable. I thought there was something wrong with me, like I'm a weirdo or an outsider. And uh, I really, I truly felt over my uh, young life, so young people listen to me, that there's just something seriously wrong with me. Well, there's something kind of seriously wrong with all of us, actually, right? Um, and and that in the okay way, because it just is telling, that's God telling you, you need my redemption. You need my love. You need me to draw you to myself. I don't deserve it. Okay, none of us deserve it. I'm here to tell you, you know. I don't qualify. I'm too far outside. I've done too much wrong. You know, Pastor, you know what Pastor Ben says? He says, the world says shame on you, but God says shame off you right? So God would tell you shame off you today. Shame off you. Receive the love I have for you. It's not about outside and inside. 
if you let yourself be accepted, which can only be a gift from the acceptor, you can't ever make someone accept you, but that's what God open armed is doing for you and for me is saying, I want to accept you. I want to bring you into my heart, into the life that I born you for in the first place, the life I created for you. I hope that makes some sense today, and I hope that's some encouragement. You know, us people who've known Jesus for a while, we don't mind being reminded of how good God is. Um, but if some of you are hearing it for the first time and you're still struggling through the whole outside-inside thing, just crush the outside-inside thing under your foot and uh, receive the acceptance that Jesus has for you today. I'd pray for you. Lord, if there's anybody here feeling like they just have felt on the outside and they're hearing my words and there's, hopefully they're seeing people who it's not that we have it together. It's just that we've received your love, God. We've accepted. We've received your acceptance. We've entered into it. And that's for men and women, young and old, that are here today. So um, for anyone who needs it, Lord, I think the thing I would ask you today, Jesus, is reveal yourself to their heart and tell them it's for you. I can say with God's heart, I, I believe, and not be like somebody about to be struck by lightning, that it's for you. It's for, I'm telling you, it's for you too. If it was for me, then it's for you. And if, for, if it's for any of us, then it's for all of us. So please let Jesus come into your life, come into your heart, heal broken things, draw you close to him. Be the father maybe you never had. That came up before worship today, uh, before the service ever started. One of our young guys said, I don't know if you, you know, um, grew up with a good father or not, but God wants to be that to you. So so that's my that's it. I can I can stop any time. But can you hear <laughs> I hope you hear God's heart for you today. I believe that's God's heart for you today. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I hope you didn't uh, come expecting um, a performance from me this morning because I don't know if we're going to get there. I just want to, <laughs> I just want to continue in that though. Let's just continue. Let's just continue to listen to God, Lord. Whatever Your Word would be for us this morning, we're open for it. We want You. As we continue to receive, obviously we we hold it within the Scriptures. We hold it before You, God. And anything you would hear this morning, you, I've been walking us through this on how to receive prophetic words, how to receive words from God. And number one, we say, is this biblical? Number two, we say, does it resonate with the Holy Spirit as he would be speaking to us? And then number three, especially if it's like a directional thing, we ask, um, we, we run it by wise counsel in our life. So as we would hear something where we feel like, oh, I wonder if, I wonder if this is God speaking to me this morning. This is, this is how we receive it. And we receive it in faith. So Lord, we just continue to, we just continue to press in. We want to hear you, God. Continue to speak to us. Whatever you would want to do this morning, it's not about performance. It's just about ministering unto you, listening to you, responding to you. Right, this is a life with Jesus. And this morning we just get to do this on a, on a different level as a, as a church, as a congregation. Nick, did you, have, did you have something you were flipping to in the scripture or is the Lord still? Still, okay, all right, all right, cool. cool. Who else has something they feel like the, um, the Lord would wanna share with us this morning? As we're listening, I felt like one of the things that the Lord spoke during pre-service um, as we were praying was that the Lord wanted to heal bodies. We believe that Jesus is our healer. And we had talked about impressions. 
we talked about one of the ways that, that the Lord would speak is through physical impressions. And we laid that out in the Bible and examples of that last week. And so you can um, go back and listen to that. But one of the things I, I feel like the Lord is wanting to do is to heal a, a middle, middle back type of thing. I don't know. It's, it's like not quite all the way up to your neck, but it's, it's something in the middle of your back. It's, it's kind of tight. It's funky. Anybody, anybody have that? Yeah? Okay. All right. So we're just going to pray and ask Jesus to heal you. Um, and whoever's around, would you just, just lay hands on him if you're cool with that? Okay. God, we believe that you are our healer. We've seen it in the scriptures time and time again where you would heal the body. We believe we believe that you paid the price for our healing. Your example in scripture is to pray that your will would be done on earth right here, right now, as it is in heaven. And we know the fullness of what it looks like in heaven is that bodies would be fully healed, that there would be no more sickness, no more disease, no more pain. And so we speak right now to this body in Jesus' mighty name and say, be healed. Be healed. Father, we pray, pray that you would just be moving through the muscles, releasing tension in Jesus' name. Just relaxing those muscles, Lord. God, we pray that uh, any, any of the tendons or ligaments or anything uh, going on there in the body, uh, that you would, yeah, Lord, that you would even rebuild there needs to be a, a rebuilding there, that the spacing within each vertebrae would actually be correct fully and completely. Heal, Lord. Heal, Lord. We ask you in faith. We believe that you are our healer. Thank you, Jesus. Do you feel any any difference right now? So like, um, in, in terms of what's happening in your body, you're good, completely good. Jesus is healing. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We give you praise, Lord. We point it all back to you, declaring that you're our healer. You know exactly what needs to be taking place. And so we thank you, Lord. Straight back? Okay. Are you cool if we pray for you? Okay. Awesome. Is it same thing. Mid-back? Okay. Yeah, Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name. We just pray the releasing of your healing power. Thank you, God, that you would be moving through her back right now. I even pray for just a, a sensation of your moving and that you would be, you would be, um, yeah, just releasing, releasing the tension, releasing it, God. Even for damage that was done in the past, Lord, we just see you, we see you recreating, we see you, um, yeah, we see you healing, replacing even where it's just been like torqued, like super torqued. We just pray that you torque it back, Lord, right now. That the, uh, uh, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, almost like your body being jolted. And we just see you bringing back into rightness, God, right now. We believe you're our healer, Jesus. Heal now. We pray a straightening also right now, God. We just see you, uh, I just see you straightening and realigning, straightening and realigning her back. Any any alignment issues, all the way from the head, all the way down, all the way down, Lord, right now. Thank you, Jesus. 
You feel what's going on with you? Can you tell? Can you tell me? Wow. Wow. Yeah, we praise you, Lord. We give you glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Was there other any any other uh, back things? The the mid back. Oh yeah, huh? We just talked about this. Yeah, yeah. Eric, would you mind heading over there? Anyone anyone around him? Let's just lay hands on him. Let's continue to ask for healing. Lord, I pray that you'd be working from the inside out. Any of the, uh, any like open wounds, like in internally. God, I pray that you'd close them up right now in Jesus' name. I pray that the pain would cease right now, God. And Father, I, I just see again, just a, a loosening of like the entirety of the back. I see the, the, the tension of the muscles like all the way up through their spine, which is like pulling. And I just see a, a, a loosening of it right now. Thank you, God. Full healing, full healing. Father, we pray, I just pray, I just pray even for a new season of health over him. A freshness. Chris? Yeah. Hey. Yeah, see if you can't move any pain, any... Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. While we were doing that, anybody else have the Lord speak, saying anything? So this is actually a picture that I got a little while ago, but um, I was like sitting in a room in a house and it was like totally dark and I felt like there was just like more darkness coming. and and yet emanating from me was light that was just breaking up the darkness. And I feel like that's something that a lot of us are feeling right now, like darkness is just coming and coming in waves, and it's not going away. And we are the light. Like that is our call, our commission is to be the light in this world. And I just feel like that is something that is over this church right now, that the joy of the Lord is here so presently in a way that I, in my dry season, haven't felt in a little while, and it's so beautiful, and we are called to take that out into a world that's full of darkness. So you are the light, and in those moments where you feel discouraged and covered in darkness, you are the light. So. Wow. I actually just had that conversation last night with our five-year-old. His, uh, his fish tank light was on last night. We were just talking about being the light of the world and standing out. And he was just saying, yeah, what does it look like to stand out? I said, look, right there, right there. And now that light is stepping out of the darkness and touching everything around us, right? That's, that's the good news of who we get to be. We get to bring this light, this goodness to the world around us. What else we got?
right, so God's been speaking this to my heart for this whole week, and um, he just wants us to know that we are set apart. We are being sanctified. When we go through things, we go through them differently. We don't hear what we're going through and freak out. We hear what we, we hear and we see what we're going through in our life, and we pray and we worship, and we trust. So I just encourage all of you guys, if you're going through trials, whatever it is, we all have different trials that we're going through, remember that we're set apart. We're not gonna go through the trial the same way another person went through a trial. We're not gonna go through divorce the same way another person went through divorce. We're not gonna go through COVID the same way other people went through COVID. We are gonna get through it with Jesus in the center. So just remember, we are set apart and we are being sanctified, and that is a lifelong thing. So be encouraged. And remember, that ties into the whole being different part, too. Part of the reason why we feel different is because we are set apart, because we do live differently, because we do respond differently. We live from this place of holiness, holding it before the Lord. So I was sitting there, and I was just thinking through, sometimes you get in your head and you're like, is this me or is this God? That's all right, at least you're working it through. And, and I feel like, I don't know if it's online or if it's someone in here, but I feel like you're hearing all these things and you're seeing all of this. And you're saying, that's great, but what about me? How does this apply to me? But God sees you. God knows your struggles. And you're not forgotten. In 1 Peter 2.9, he says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now, but now you are God's people. He wants you to know that you may have not felt like somebody but you are somebody and you're not forgotten. So don't let, that, don't let that thought resonate in you anymore. Don't let that thought consume you. Today is a day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. God, we just... We thank you for the way today went. Lord, we thank you that your will is being done in this place today. God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit has manifested upon your people today, Lord. Your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people, and that is evident today in this place, God. I thank you for each and every heart and mind, Lord that is present, whether it's online or whether it's here, God, I thank you that you've give, given them exactly what you have for them today, Lord. I thank you that it, it seeps deep down in their hearts and their minds, God, and wherever they're at, they would submit and surrender to you so that you can work those things out in their life. I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for this time, God. Let us not forget what's occurred here today as we go out about our week, God. But let us be the light everywhere we go that you could work in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. I realize that I've had my back turned on you guys in case you have something to share. These microphones. <laughs> I think I, I think God's not done with what Ned brought up. I, I really sense that God wants to heal some hearts today from unhealthy fathers 
and that he wants to change the way that we look at him because he doesn't want us to relate anymore from who our earthly father was. He wants us to relate to him because he's God the Father. And so would it be okay if we just sang Run to the Father again? If we, I just think that during this song, that as, as we just sing and we just get before the Lord, that that heart, there's two or three people here today that God really wants to heal your heart. And he really wants, yeah, he really wants you to be able to see what he sees. And he wants you to be able to do like Don shared. He wants to run and sit on his lap. And if you're not the snuggling type, <laughs> and then to just have fun with him and to laugh with him. But if you're the snuggly type, to just be embraced by the Father and let God heal that. He really wants to change the way that we see him. He wants us to be free in that Father heart. So let's just, let's just go with it. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. Just let him heal that now. And I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation. And I see it now, I'm laying it down, and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, I fall into grace, I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I run to Father again and again and again and again And you saw my condition had a plan Your son for redemption, the price for my heart. And I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend all I My soul needs a friend, so I'll run to 
worship you, Lord. We just worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory to a cradle.
Jesus, we just praise you. And we just once again afresh come before you and we declare you, Jesus. We declare you as the Lord of our lives. Lord, that we would submit step by step before you. Everything that we do, Lord, we say your will be done in our lives, God. That we are simply servants unto the high king. We declare you as our king. We declare you as our savior. We declare it with our mouths this morning. We declare it in our hearts this morning that you paid the price for our sins. Lord, your blood was spilt, your body was broken so that we would be able to be in right relationship with you. And so for those of us this morning who just need to step into that afresh, maybe we've been walking in a season where we haven't thought much about Jesus, but he's saying right now, come, come. And so we do, we, we declare it afresh, Lord. And maybe some of us this morning have never taken that step. So we just declare it now, Lord. We declare Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. We want to live our lives fully and completely for and with you. And we thank you, God, that we don't have to do it alone. We thank you that when we give our lives to you, you place the Holy Spirit to live within us. That you would never be far away. That you are a God who's near. And we thank you that within this relationship, we get to hear your voice. Your scripture says, Lord, that we are to be continually filled by your spirit. And God, I pray over your church. I pray over your people this morning. I pray for a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit. God, fill us up. For those of us, those of us who haven't walked in your power, God, we ask right now for the baptism of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, that you would come upon your people just as you came upon the prophets and the kings of old and the judges, Lord, how you would empower them to reach the people around them, to carry out your message, to carry out your will for their life. Father, I pray and we invite you right now. We pray, God, that we would be baptized afresh with your Holy Spirit that you would be with us, that you would be in us, and you would be upon us. Father, I pray for supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles to be taking place. We pray that out, Lord, over this region. God, we pray that you would reach out and touch people. Come on, Lord. I pray for prophetic words, even just right now, Lord. I pray that you would be calling into our attention, calling into our thoughts, people who are outside of this room. Lord, that you'd be giving us visions, that you'd be giving us impressions, that you'd be giving us dreams, that you'd be giving us words to speak, scriptures to share. Lord, and we just pray. We pray for the transformation of southeastern Idaho in Jesus' mighty name. God, we call out, Holy Spirit, would you move? Would you move through the streets from door to door? God, would you move through our families, through our workplace, through our, our friends, Lord, through our neighborhoods? God, I pray that you would be, even right now, Lord, that you would just be igniting a fresh passion for a people group. God, within each of us individually, that we would recognize that the question is not whether we are a missionary, but the question is where we are a missionary to. Father, I pray that you would just be impressing that upon your people this morning, where you're calling us to bring your good news to, where you're calling us to walk in your power to, where you're calling us to move through us, God. God, would you release, would you release that gospel transformation to southeastern Idaho? Jesus, would you be glorified? Jesus, would you be magnified here through our lives? God, that we would live a, see, God, 
life. That in everything that we do, that we would be able to say, see, God, that we would point back to you and show us strategic ways to do that in every situation, Lord. Stir us up, God. Ignite us with a passion, a passion for the things of God, for your kingdom. Fill us up, God. Send us, send us out, Lord, that this message would go out, that this power of God would go out past these four walls and bring this transformation, God. We cry out for it. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. And this morning, we just present ourselves to you, God, as vessels for your righteousness. Things that would be filled up and would be carried to destinations. I just see you sending us out from, from here to destinations. Move through us, God. Move through us, Lord. Yeah, and I just see I, I just see one more thing before I let you go, but I, I see families. I see families of people who are in this room being reached. And I, I see I see God working through you to reach family members. And so God, I just pray right now, call those family members into mind. And Father, I pray that as you, as we would continue to press into you, open our ears to the sound of your voice and give us those strategic ways those specific steps, those specific conversations, even go specific, as specific as the words. Why not? Give us the exact words to speak. Show us how you want to unlock hearts and unlock lives. Lord, would partial visions become full visions? And Father, I just pray for a boldness to be released in this church. A boldness released in your people to take this, take this and go. That we would be those who take your great commission seriously and we would go and bring this good news. Go and make disciples. Go and move in power. Go and live like you lived, Jesus. And like you live. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next week.